I'm glad that you're here. Welcome to another edition of Bible Alive. We got some exciting things we're going to talk about today. It's about Revelation chapter 14, and it's on the three angels' message. What is this three angels' message? And by the way, what does it mean by those angels giving that to us? In the context, what's an angel? We'll find out. But before we do, I want to introduce you to you, good friend of mine, Pastor Mark Howard. Glad you're here today. Good to be back, Dwight, as always. It's always fun to discuss things, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It? Make it practical. Make it, make it come alive. Come alive. And Rudy, my brother, glad that you're here, Rudy. Always exciting to study God's Word. Isn't Amen. it? And um, Mark, you know, all I can say is with two brothers, you better behave yourself today. Yeah, I'm between both of you guys now. i got to be watch my P's and Q's. That's it, day, right? that's it. Well, let's get started. Revelation chapter 14. Tremendous. This is one of my favorite subjects. Before we start reading, we'll, um, we'll have a word of prayer. But if you don't have those Bibles, go get them. We want you to dig into the Word, not just listen to us, but get in yourself and you can mark some things down. It's pretty neat. Our Bibles are marked up. We love um, studying the Word. So get, get there, Revelation chapter 14. And if you have to, happen to be using a remnant study Bible, we're on page 1530. Okay, that's very good. Okay, well, let's have a word of prayer before we start. Father in heaven, what a blessing it is to open your Word. But Father, we don't want to uh, misconstrue the word. We do not want to um, be on the left side or the right side. We want to be balanced. And you've said here, little, there, little, line upon line, precept upon precept. With your word, we can always be balanced. It's not about what we think, Father, but what you um, have for us, what truth really is. Send us your Holy Spirit. Guide our hearts and our minds. And I just pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay. Now, the three angels' message. Um, what's that all about? Well, you know, first of all, Dwight, for, for uh, our viewers, this is a passage of Scripture that's fairly distinctive to Seventh-day Adventists. Not that it's not a biblical thing, but it's just something that, that uh, we have felt has a special application to God's church at the end of time. Okay. And we find it again in Revelation 14. And the, the passage we're going to be looking at starts in verse 6, where John switches scenes. And he begins by saying in verse 6, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, yes. having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Now, but that gonna, doesn't leave too many people out of there, does it? No, no, no. And we're going to come right back to that. I just want to give our viewers the setting. If you go to Revelation uh, 14, verse 14, it says, John says right after he sees two more angels come, he sees uh -huh. these three angels. Then he says uh, in verse 14, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Mm. And, of course, you harvest with a sickle, right, which right. is what you're going to see in verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the what? Harvest. Harvest of the earth is ripe. Is ripe. And so this is a picture. You know, when does Jesus come to harvest his saints? Well, that's at his second, second coming. coming yeah. And so we want our, our viewers to understand that these messages we're looking at right here in verses 6 through 12 have a setting just prior to the coming of Jesus in the clouds of glory. So it's right at the end of time, the, ma the message, the last message to be given to usher in the second coming of Jesus. And it's to everybody. I mean, that's, that's what I like that's about right. verse 6 that you read. If you are a nation or a tribe or a tongue, or if you live on the earth, <laughs> that's right. then it's for you. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. You know, the, in Bible times, the Jews thought it was a for special them. message for them, and, and different religions and creeds think it's for them. But this is saying... You know, nation, tribe, or those on the earth. That's right. So that doesn't leave anybody out. And another good point there, Rudy, is that, as you mentioned, you know, there are even some Christians who buy into that and they say, well, I suppose maybe back then it was just for the Jews. But the Bible calls it the everlasting gospel, which means from the very beginning to the very end, there's only one gospel that saves all mankind, and that's the everlasting gospel. And Pastor, that, where did the uh, gospel start? Wasn't that Genesis 3.15? That's right. We see the first gospel promise in Genesis. That's right. So the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. <clears throat> and, and it's all kind of encapsulated in the exchange's message. Now, two things that I just want to, uh, you know, that you might have not thought about, some of you have. 
Number one, angel. It's a three yeah. angels' messages. They saw another angel uh, proclaiming this message. What does the word angel mean? I, I mean, in the in the Greek, the word angel. What's what is the meaning of angel? Angelos means messenger. Okay, literally means messenger. And while we wouldn't, we don't want to say that there are not angels involved here. John sees an angel flying. Right. He says he has the gospel to preach. Well, who was the gospel given to to preach? It's you and I. It was given to the church. Yes. Jesus said to his disciples, uh, "All authority is given me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations." Uh, Matthew 24, 14 said, This gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness, and then the end shall come. He was That's speaking right. to That's his right. church, and his church was to preach the gospel. So when we see an angel flying, it's not telling us angels are going to preach the gospel, but it's saying that the work of preaching the gospel, especially this last day setting, is of such importance that it's pictured with angels of God, as it were, directing the work uh, that the church is doing on the earth. That's tremendous. Amen. And, and something else, I don't, I don't make it, I, it, you could do a whole other study, but we were talking on one of our programs, um, it, they, you know, about the temptations of Christ. Yeah. And there was how many temptations? Three. So, how, and how many messages do we have? Yeah, we have three messages. Three messages. I mean, God is constantly through this whole scriptures trying to, um, and, 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 and working with each one of us to restore the image of man in us. You know, the, the real Christ-like, you know, the, the self-like God. Restore the image God. of unfallen man. Unfallen man, that's God, right. That's God's right. original plan. Exactly. And, and here's three angels' messages that encapsulate everything. It, right. it, if you've got this three angels' message, if, if you understand this, it's, it's everything. You know, I think that's pretty significant. Yeah, so if we look at that, verses 6 and 7, it says the, he sees another angel. He's having the everlasting gospel to preach to everyone, as we said. Look at verse 7. <clears throat> Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Now, it's interesting that that portion is in quotes. So the angel who has the everlasting gospel to preach when he begins to speak in the context of that everlasting gospel, he brings up um, giving God glory. He brings up God's judgment hour, and he brings up uh, him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the creative power of God in that setting. And one of, and one of the things, too, um, I love this. Number one, he's saying it with a loud voice, and the first mm. thing in quotes that he says is fear God. That's right. Um, sometimes we, we talk about fearing God as... Just being afraid, and we, you know, can't think. But um, I would love the you as the uh, viewers out there today uh, write this fear down, and then look that up in a concordance. You can get on your computers and search fear in the Bible, and there's a lot of meanings that 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 will talk about fear. One, fear God means to hate evil. That's right. You know, um, what's the whole duty of man? Ecclesiastes, what is it? Twelve. Twelve, thirteen. Thirteen 14. says. Fear God and keep His commandments, yes. for this is the whole duty of man. It's interesting, Dwight, too, because that text in Ecclesiastes 12, we probably mm -hmm. ought to look at it because it is a perfect parallel to what we read in Revelation 14, 6, and 7. Okay. Go to the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes. You come to the Psalms, go to Proverbs, Ecclesiastes comes after that. And at the very end of the book, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14... He says, uh, it's page 769 in the Remnant Study Bible, says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all, or the whole duty of man, whole it says in the King James yeah, yeah. Version. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Okay. Now you have in Revelation, fear God, and instead of keeping His commandments, it says, give Him glory, for the hour of His judgment has come. Ecclesiastes says, fear God and keep His commandments, for God will bring every work into judgment. So you see the parallel. That's right. And what's interesting is in this end time setting, we see it again in verse 12, it says, here's the patience of the saints, here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Right. There are That's some right. Christians today who think the commandments of God the importance of keeping God's commandments, His Ten Commandments has passed away from, that was Old Testament times, but we see here that it's those who have faith, the faith of Jesus, yes. who are found keeping God's commandments. Well, in what's the context it says in Habakkuk, it's in, well, in Hebrews, it's impossible to please God without faith. 
you go into Habakkuk, the just shall live by faith. That's right. And, um, and, I, and I think, too, if you do a study on glory, which we won't get into, we don't have much time for a break, but it says, fear God and give glory to Him, which if we give God glory, we will be doing His will. That's right. That's keeping His... Jesus says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. commandments. So right. it's all part of this, this first message. That's right. And so, and the, and the other thing is, fear God and, and keep His commandments. He'll bring every work into judgment. Yes. It says, fear God and give glory for the hour of His judgment has come. Oh. What's the basis of that judgment? Those commandments. That's right. You know, God's people, if they're not found doing His will when He comes, uh, then there's judgment. That's right. So there's a common thread from Genesis to Revelation. That's right. On how God expects His people uh, to act in order to be saved. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I mean, it's packed. This yes, passage it's is packed. So much. Um, and one other thing that we're not going to have time to flesh out now before the break, but he brings up this idea of worshiping him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. What you see here is really in verses 6 and 7 when the everlasting gospel is proclaimed to all the world, it's calling man back to worship the Creator. Yes. You know, I mean, that's why it's in that fear God and give glory to Him. Judgment is coming. Are you ready for that judgment? Worship Him. Yes. It's calling people back. You have opportunity. <laughs> Nobody needs to be lost. The invitation is open now. Worship Him who is your Maker, who created, who created all things. Yeah, because it's got part of the creation right there. That's right. You know, and um, that's tremendous. Wow. Well, I think, we'll, I think we're going to take a break right mm -hmm. now. Uh, we're going to get into the next two angels' messages. But isn't this exciting? I mean, worship God, give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment has come. It's tremendous. We're going to take this short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Men looked at the lofty and supposedly fireproof buildings and said, they are perfectly safe. But these buildings were consumed as if made of pitch. The fire engines could do nothing to stay the destruction. When Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, then we may know that the end is near. When we look around, it's easy to see that God is just about to return. And Satan is doing all he can to deceive and confuse everybody with television and movies like Twilight, Supernatural, ghost hunters, and many, many others. If you want to be a part of God's remnant people sharing truth, then I want to offer you some tools to help you do just that. These little books from remnant publications are filled with biblical truth, like what happens when you die, the dangers of witchcraft, and the vampire craze in the movies and television. I urge you, friends, to get as many of these books as possible and share them with the people that you know need them. There's not much time left Let's do all we can right now. Don't wait. Order now at remnantpublications.com or call Russian officials accepted the Vatican credentials of Archbishop Antonio Menini as the first ever papal nuncio to Russia. The event ushers in a new era of full diplomatic relations between the Holy See and the Russian Federation. Pope Benedict XVI and President Dmitry Medvedev.